All right, here we go. On this episode of Ultimate Rides, we hit the open road with five Ultimate RVs. It's showtime. Guaranteed to rock your vacation. I always thought it was kind of weird driving around in a big box and sleeping in it. We hook up with the best. About right here is where they chop the van off. Roll up in style. It drives like a Cadillac. Pitch up wherever. Cheers. Cheers, sweetheart. Let's go camping. Ooh, I'm ready. The 6,000 hour build. Yeah, I have issues, obviously. But don't be fooled. There's the train horns. Because even the most sensible rides have got a wild side. In Vegas, baby, city of dreams, my hometown, smack dab in the middle of a desert. And what could be more out of place 275 miles from the nearest sea? A massive boat. But this ain't no ordinary boat. This is the Boater Home. Only 21 of these unique rides were built in the 80s combining a modified Ford Econoline van with a Watercraft Sports King cabin cruiser. It's really convenient. It's fun. It's unique. It's just exactly like an RV, but it floats. It's amazing. Brand new, this vehicle would have cost a cool $110,000. That's a whole lot of cash back in 1986. Half boat, half RV, but totally awesome. John inherited this baby from its original owner. My dad saw it in Popular Science magazine in the early 80s, and he's like, I got to have that. Now, I like that a lot. Man, I want one of these. About right here is where they chop the van off, and then the rest is fiberglass back with the seamless uh, boat connection. Custom swim deck, nice big one, alpha drive, ladder, underwater lighting. Gives a good about 35 foot sprawl of blue or white or mixed, very pretty. There's the train horns. We put all disc brakes on it, some shocks, a little bit of driveline work. I restored it twice now. Boats need maintenance, RVs need maintenance, so put them together, they need a little extra maintenance. <laughs> it's well worth it. And inside, is it still 1987? Here we got our kitchen counter, our stove, AC unit, conventional oven, microwave. Right here's a fridge, dining table area. This goes down, things pull out, and makes a bed nice, comfortable for two people. This is the bathroom and shower. And then more little hangout area, two couches. Uh, these fold together and make the bed. I've done a little bit of work to it, uh, made it a little bigger inside, a little more roomy, but the design of what the guy laid out is pretty much original. It was that easy. And look how big it is. Oh. Watch the chair. Like, completely. Oh, yeah. Let's go camping. Woo, I'm ready. Captain chair, helm. This is where I drive. So this is my gauge. Uh, I got my fuel, my trim, miles per hour, my stereo, my charger, train horn button. All right, let's catch some waves. You don't have to tow a boat with your RV and then back the boat in and do all that trailer work. It's really a one-man program. I can do it all by myself, nice and easy. Never have to get wet. That's a great part. It's been all over the country with my dad. Personally, I've taken it to California, Dumont Sand Dunes, camped in it there. Lake Havasu, Catalina Island. We're hitting Lake Powell this year, hopefully. It's a truck, a boat, and a home. 
But this is Vegas, so can it party? Brother man, that is my kind of RV. From a boat on wheels to a camo camper with attitude. Check, check, check. All right, here we go. This RV is packing some serious attitude. We're constantly in places where no other RVs can get to. And while it may be off-road, it definitely ain't off the shelf. Together, we built our own RV we named Wazamoo. Wazamoo means crazy in Swahili. And Courtney and Trevor are definitely a little nuts to take on a project this huge. The couple built Wazamu out of an M1078 military truck that they picked up at auction. Then they set to work converting the combat vehicle into a heavenly home on wheels. It might be mean looking, but this thing was made with love. We did our entire build for $37,000. That did include the purchase of the truck instead of taking our time to make the absolute perfect vehicle from the very beginning, we just did it. We got on the road. And they did it all in just six weeks. This used to be where our generator sat, which is now back here. We've updated our entire solar system with lithium batteries. Went from we have good air conditioning, good heat for about six hours, depending on the heat outside, to we have it for days. Central tire inflation system is actually really cool. We can adjust our air pressure as low as 15 PSI, as high as 95 PSI, depending on what kind of terrain we're dealing with. It's pretty rad to show up and everybody else has to stop, switch to four-wheel drive, air down their tires, and we just kind of drive right on past them. This truck is designed to be able to handle up to four feet of water. We've done about three feet, I had no problems. That actually is our cross through. So while I'm driving, Courtney and the boys can jump on through, no big deal. And for Courtney, Lewis, and Duke, it's like crawling into another dimension. Inside is my domain. Uh, we have a U-shaped couch, which is also used for our clothing storage at the moment. And then on top, as you've probably guessed, is our bed, um, which is on a crank system that usually people use like in their garages. If we're gonna live like hippies, I didn't want to smell like hippies. So I really wanted a nice bathroom situation. Originally, we had an actual like refrigerator and uh, one trip off-roading, it detached and laid itself on our couch, and all the groceries were everywhere. But this ride is a dream made reality. We've always talked about living full time on the road or just traveling a lot. It drives like a Cadillac, hey, like a big old boat. It's a very privileged lifestyle. I tell people that all the time. Like, we are super, super lucky. It is not for the faint of heart, it's not for everybody, and it's really not that easy. Wherever you want to go, this RV will get you there. We're a slow truck in a fast house. I like that. From a dirt track home to ultimate indulgence. If you really want to hit the road in style, this is the ride that turns camping into glamping. Futuristic design, no expense spared. This is the marquee element. Our philosophy by building our vehicles is the freedom to make the impossible possible. With this eye-catching design, you have very, very special vehicle which you can use either for private purposes as an RV, as a mobile home, but also as a VIP coach or even for hospitality and event activities. 
this $3 million mobile mansion will eat your money and spit out a palace on wheels. Built on a Super Volvo chassis, this element can take an incredible payload of interior design, giving any buyer unlimited options for specification. You've never seen an RV like this before. So this is how all begins. The engine we have chosen is an original Volvo engine with the latest emission standards. This chassis is already extended to the desired total length of 45 feet. We adapted already uh, our additional air suspension for the main body. So step by step, it becomes a luxury element vehicle. The marquee is top spec from bumper to bumper with a unique space age design. At the latest version, we had to redesign the front grille because we need a lot of air intake uh, for the engine. Also, we decided to choose an automatic sliding door as an entrance to the cab. To build in a very high specific level of quality, you need a very carefully selected choice of materials and components. If you've got the budget, the Element has got custom options that'll blow your mind. Super chic hotel with gold trim on everything. Slick white business space. Ultra high-tech demo center. Or a coach fit for a royal ride. You want dinner on the roof? We got this. This RV is money, but how does it handle? The view out of the cockpit is incomparable to any other vehicle. It's a spectacular view on all sides. It takes eight months to build our element vehicles. It is extremely expensive, but it's definitely outstanding and unique, and uh, we are very proud. From a five-star RV to Love Bug Retro. Over in Canada, this garage is home to an epic RV with a retro twist. Like a motorhome got busy with a VW Beetle. This is the eccentric Superbugger. Meet the happy campers who pilot the bugger, Sandra and Bill. It's a 1969 Volkswagen. It's a conversion kit that was done in the late 60s, early 70s. In the 1970s, a California company took the beloved VW Beetle and put it in a blender with an RV. Out came the Super Bugger. On sale then for a cool 6,000 bucks, the fiberglass panel living space and retro looks absolutely guarantees attention. My dad got it in the early to mid 80s. I got it about 98, 99. It was in pretty rough shape. And uh, I'd say the last 10 years, 11 years, been seriously uh, restoring it, putting money into it. She's been painted and all the body work got redone and the engine and- Two weeks ago, we, got the, we uh, got the carpet done and now she's set. You gotta admire this restoration. These RVs are as rare as a Bigfoot sighting. Our mechanic, he believes there's only four or five left in this condition. If you go online, you can see a number of them, but uh, not in this shape. It's got the front of a Volkswagen. It's a 69. They've converted it in. They actually left the chassis as it was and built around it. Just like a normal Volkswagen, it's got the trunk in the front. It's got a, a fair amount of space. You're not gonna fit a body in there. Move the wheel and you'll get a body in. The tires themselves are brand new, but the rims are original. Another feature that I really like is the doors. It's nearly five feet high. At the rear, we have the engine. It's uh, the same style engine as uh, a normal Volkswagen. Four cylinder, runs very well, easy to maintain. We've got uh, a small ladder that goes up to the second floor. <laughs> 
I like the insignia here. It lets everybody know what it is. Super <laughs> bugger. <laughs> you really can't hide that. The dash is original. Four speed is on the floor. Stick shift, of course. Uh, the original wheel. Bucket seats are a great addition. They have a Newfoundland style air conditioning uh, unit. Here we go. Aircon. Seating for four. Yeah, it's tight, but it's comfortable. We also have a uh, stove and a small sink. The table uh, comes down and it converts into a bed. There we go. <laughs> How's that? That's perfect. You don't really think of it when you don't have one, but since we've gotten it, you can just hop in it and go. You can sleep in it, you can cook in it. It's a real eye-turner when we go out. People just flock to it. Smiling, everybody looks at her, wants to see the inside of her. And then they ask me, did we build it? Sometimes I lie and say we did, but <laughs> most of the times <laughs> I'll tell the truth. She's my little girl. I baby her. She's precious to me. It's a fun, fun vehicle right. to drive around in. Cheers. Cheers, sweetheart. Yeah. From Super 70s to a silver bullet, From beyond the stars comes an interstellar ride, straight out of Flash Gordon's dreams. Inspired by retro sci-fi, this gleaming RV is the Deco Liner. I was never a big motor homer. And I always thought it was kind of weird driving around in a big box and sleeping in it. Then I built the Deco Liner. It's really cool. We had a lot of fun with it. I put over 15,000 miles on the Deco Liner. The wife and I drove all over America. The Deco Liner was a 6,000 hour build executed over an 18 month period. I know, do the math. It's a serious medical condition. That's seven days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day. There were only 15 days taken off during the entire build. Yeah, I have issues, obviously. The Deco Liner is out of this world. Randy invested over $100,000 in parts and an insane amount of work to turn this 1973 GMC motorhome into a custom rare beauty. Although put up for sale for a cool half a million, it's kind of priceless. It's not based on anything else. Most motorhomes, you walk up a flight of stairs to get above the engine and the drivetrain. Because the deco liner is front wheel drive, the frame is only 14 inches off the ground, and it allowed me to stack the roof and still keep it under the 13.6 legal max here in the States. And one guy thought, screw it, and fronted the cash for this reflective ride. I have always loved the design of it, the art deco aspect of the vehicle. By happenstance, I met somebody who knew Randy discovered that the vehicle was for sale. So we arranged a meeting and worked out a deal. It's an amazing vehicle to, to be involved with because everybody smiles profusely at it. It just brings a lot of joy to people. The Deco Liner sure looks impressive, but there's engineering genius at work behind the style. I've always thought of the Deco Liner as Flash Gordon's motorhome. It's one of the coolest things about the Deco Liner is the fact that you can drive it from the roof. Yep. He said the roof. I always get asked, is that legal? Well, it's not illegal, and it's a very fine line. For a policeman to pull you over and write you a ticket, he's got to put down what vehicle code you violated. And there's nothing on the books about driving a car from the roof. This ride doesn't give a damn about the rules. And no wonder, Randy's got a history of creating incredible customs. This is what I do for fun and profit. I actually make a living building these crazy vehicles. A lot of people know me for the Jay Leno tank car. That was the very first car that I built, and that really put me on the map. Believe me, when Jay Leno buys your car and gives it the thumbs up, you're a hero. So here we are in Frankenmuth, Michigan. And there's this giant car show. Really had fun bringing the deco liner and letting everybody see it and experience it firsthand. No surprise, this amazing ride is a star attraction at any car show in the world. 
Make that the universe. One of the lessons that I learned very early on about the deco liner is that there's a certain responsibility that comes with driving it. I was driving it to its debut in the Portland Art Museum up in Portland, Oregon, and I was late. Showtime. And I mobbed at the gas station with everybody wanting to know what this crazy thing is. So I finally get fueled up, and I'm like, I need to go, I need to go, you guys. And then here comes a bus full of 30 deaf kids. And they all surround me, and, and the guy, he's asking me questions, and he's signing to the kids. And, and I'm in a hurry, and I got to go. That's when it really hit me. Wow, you don't have time for 30 deaf kids? What's wrong with you, guy? That's when I realized, when you bring the circus to town, you better have the patience to deal with the response, the smiles, and the joy, and letting the kids go up on the upper deck. That's what floats my boat. It's really an honor and a privilege to make people smile and laugh wherever it goes. I'm a lucky guy. Wow, five RVs, five totally different rides. It doesn't matter how you customize as long as you do it in style. See you next time on Ultimate Rides.